Well, right now, the president and the White House task force are updating the country on the latest measures uh, taken to fight the coronavirus pandemic that is happening right now. And we are continuing to stream that briefing on our website, mynbc15.com, if you want to listen in. Tonight, somber figures as the death toll from COVID-19 tops 30,000 worldwide. In the United States, there are now more than 136,000 cases and at least 2,400 deaths. Here in Alabama, there are more than 800 cases in the state, and the Alabama Department of Public Health is reporting four deaths in the state. But that does not include the death in Mobile or Baldwin County, or the five deaths that were confirmed at East Alabama Medical Center on Friday. Health officials say the state is not reporting these deaths because they are working through the process for e official state determination. Ten days ago, Governor Kay Ivey issued an order closing all beaches, both public and private. But despite the ban, crowds are still forming on islands and sandbars in Orange Beach. NBC 15's Jaysha Patel is live from Perdido Pass right now. Jaysha, you spoke to someone who witnessed large groups gathering. Andrea, Jimmy Carter says he was just out trying to take some photos of wildlife when he says he saw people gathering on the water here. He says he took some photos and posted it on social media and got some backlash. Carter tells me he saw boats filled with 10 to 15 people out here. Now they do have the right to gather here, but he says they definitely were not following social distancing recommendations. He says pretty no key is popular among spring breakers and Carter isn't the only one who has seen people out gathering on the water. We've gotten multiple pictures from viewers of people on Robinson Island, which was purchased by the city of Orange Beach. We also reached out to Orange Beach Mayor Tony Kennan, who said he didn't want to comment. I was surprised more than anything because I knew the beaches had been closed and we'd seen some of the beaches and they looked, it's weird to see a beautiful day with no one on the beach. And then all of a sudden you saw those people and you said, wow, what were they thinking? Well, they were all over the place. There was one boat with 12 or 15 people on there. It wasn't all one family. And again, it's going on all over the country with people deciding that they don't want to do this. Tonight at 10, you'll hear from a doctor on what he thinks about people gathering on the water and at beaches. Reporting live at Perdido Pass, Jaysha Patel, NBC 15 News. Jaysha, thank you. A reminder here along the Gulf Coast, Gulf State Park remains open. The campgrounds, trails, and other non-beach areas are open for normal hours. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has implemented mandatory checkpoints at the state line. Travelers entering Florida are now required to complete a traveler's form requiring those coming in from Louisiana, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut to isolate for 14 days or as long as they stay in Florida. Right now, the checkpoint at the state line on I-10 is the only reported one in our viewing area at this time. A local vineyard is now lending a helping hand to help the community fight COVID-19. Jim Eddins, president of Perdido Vineyards, is pivoting his business from crafting muscadine wine to making hand sanitizer. They initially planned to make the hand sanitizer for first responders, healthcare facilities, and essential businesses in need, but noticed the public demand soon after their announcement on social media. Visit our website, mynbc15.com, for information on how you can purchase. One mobile company has found a way to keep their doors open for business while helping our hospitals at the same time. Caligas Printing is a family-owned business, making it a mission to stay afloat. The company's latest project, creating face shields that hospitals can use in their fight against COVID-19. They use machines to cut and print the supplies, an effort that could save lives. We got a sample of what they're currently using, and we patterned what we're able to do off of exactly what they were using in the hospitals now. The company's owner says the face masks are being shipped to Mobile Infirmary, Spring Hill, University, and Providence Hospitals. Halligas Printing is hoping to produce between five to 10,000 face shields per day. Now back to Washington. The White House has been given some proposed guidelines on what to do next in the battle against the coronavirus. The actions will likely have many layers with plans to help Americans and also to try to bring back the American economy. Sinclair National Correspondent Christine Perzal reports on the very latest. As coronavirus cases continue to climb, a troubling prediction from one of the nation's leading experts, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Looking at what we're seeing now, you know, I would say between 100 and 200,000 cases, but I don't want to be held to that. 
because it's, it's, it's uh, excuse me, deaths. I mean, we're, we're going to have millions of cases. Millions of cases and between 100 and 200,000 deaths. The U.S. already holding the top spot for number of confirmed cases. Numbers some in Washington believe could have been much lower had President Trump acted sooner. His uh, denial at the beginning uh, was deadly. As the president fiddles, people are dying. The president, meanwhile, has pointed the finger at China and that country's lack of transparency when the virus first started and has touted his early decision to restrict travel from China as a game-changing one. Thousands and thousands of more people, probably tens of thousands, would be dead right now if I didn't make that decision. The question for many, though, is what comes next? With tomorrow marking day 15 of what's come to be known as the 15 days to slow the spread. Now, President Trump has made no secret of his desire to loosen some restrictions, while others have suggested now may not be the right time. Because if you release the restrictions before you have a good eyeball on what's going on there, you're going to get in trouble. One thing the White House is already moving on, that stimulus bill passed by Congress and signed by President Trump on Friday, with hopes businesses and individuals will get relief as fast as possible. Within three weeks, we'll have direct deposit into people's accounts. For people where we don't have their direct deposit information, there'll be a web-based application. They can upload it. A hope that along with the health of the economy, the health of all Americans will start to improve very soon. In Washington, I'm Christine Frizzell. The coronavirus is further disrupting the 2020 census. The Census Bureau says it is extending its suspension of field work until April 15th, two weeks longer than originally planned. That means a freeze on hiring and training tens of thousands of workers to canvas millions of homes that have, haven't responded. The process, originally scheduled to end July 31st, is now set to end August 14th. A round of applause for doctors and nurses in Spain last night. First responders showed up with lights and sirens on, standing in solidarity with those on the front lines fighting the coronavirus. Police and firefighters cheered on health workers before they eventually returned back to work. It's become a ritual in the country as the country's death toll tops 6,000. And the applause doesn't stop there. Folks honoring healthcare workers all around the world, from the United Kingdom to right here in the United States, in Atlanta and in Seattle. And tonight at 7, you can join our communities in applauding our medical workers from the comfort of your car. Folks will be lining up at local hospitals, including Providence, Mobile Infirmary, Spring Hill, University, and USA Children's and Women's Hospital. All you have to do is pull up, find a place to park, and turn on your flashers for staff and patients to see. We will have that story for you coming up tonight at 10 o'clock. NBC 15 News is committed to keeping you up to date on the very latest information. We have an entire section of our website, mynbc15.com, dedicated to the coronavirus. Turning now to weather, a live look at our beach cam and Gulf Shores. Take a moment to enjoy this beautiful view because it's likely going to be changing soon. NBC 15 meteorologist Kelly Foster joins us now. Kelly, we, we could be seeing some severe weather on Tuesday. We could, Andrea. Already tracking our next weather maker. We're already under a level two out of five threat, with five being the highest. This is going to be on Tuesday. So all the area shaded in yellow under that level two threat. Western zones of our viewing area under a level one threat. So we want you ready for it. We do have some days to prepare. Looks like March is going to be going out like a lion. The severe threat is set to unfold. Storms will ignite Tuesday morning and on into Tuesday evening. So now's the time to download our NBC 15 weather app. That way, if you can't watch us on air or online, you can watch us through your phone and check back in with us as we will continue to fine tune the timing and intensity. Right now, it looks like damaging wind gusts is going to be on the medium side in terms of severe weather and on the low side, a brief tornado large hail and flooding. Notice as we head on into your Monday, a few spot showers around, but it's on Tuesday that the storms really begin to turn active. Take a look by around noontime from Demopolis to Meridian, Mississippi. Red on the radar near Chatham, that's at 3 o'clock. Downtown Mobile over towards Spanish Fort by 5 o'clock. Elsinore, Summerdale, just close towards the Milton area, just west of there. We're going to talk more about our next weather maker and the severe potential and what's in store for the first days of April coming up. Andrea. Kelly, thanks.
As she mentioned, be sure to download our NBC 15 weather app. It is free and very easy to use. You can track storms on the go as well as receive alerts when there's disruptive weather headed your way. Just search WPMI WX in the app and Google Play stores. Still ahead tonight, testing for COVID-19, the new methods in place to help everyone receive medical care during this pandemic. And disaster in Arkansas, the latest on the massive tornado that touched down wreaking havoc there. Plus frontline chaos, how employers in Italy are negotiating with their essential workers to relieve stress amid the lockdown. Ahead for us, your grocery deliveries in jeopardy as thousands working for the service Instacart threatened to strike. Plus the latest on Americans stranded overseas as coronavirus rips the globe. Those stories and more ahead on Nightly News.